The Trumpet.com update from Jerusalem. Hello again, this is Stephen Flurry reporting from Jerusalem. Hezbollah's only hope for securing long term influence in Lebanon lies in the bunkers of Syria's rapidly unraveling military. That's what Daniel Nisman wrote in an opinion piece yesterday published in the Times of Israel. He said, furthermore, Syria has always played an influential role in Lebanese politics, and Nasrallah can only imagine how his political landscape would shift with an unsympathetic, Sunni-dominated regime in Assad's stead. If this truly is Hezbollah's only hope, it seems that hope is waning fast. The deadly blast throughout Syria's urban jungles are shaking the confidence of Syria's long-standing regime, forcing it to draw up last resort contingency plans. While the horrors of war relentlessly continue and Assad's regime becomes more desperate and atrocious, international support for the Syrian regime has completely evaporated, except from its most staunch supporters, Russia, China, and of course, the Hezbollah-dominated Lebanon. As bad as it looks for Assad, Hezbollah leader Hassan Nasrallah declared staunch support for his administration all the way to the end. On July 18th, Nisman wrote, while the rest of the Middle East was savoring its first taste of the demise of the Assad regime, the head of Hezbollah reiterated his organization's unwavering support for the embattled dictator and his readiness to plunge the whole of Lebanon into conflict in order to survive. During an address before thousands of Shiite supporters in South Beirut, Nasrallah said, our missiles are Syrian. His speech's timing made it all the more symbolic. It came on the anniversary of the Second Lebanon War with Israel six years ago. Syria supported Hezbollah when it was still in the cradle and Nasrallah vows to return the favor even as the Assad regime crumbles. And if that happens, Hezbollah and perhaps the entire Shiite population of Lebanon is likely to take a major hit. Hezbollah's vast arsenal is already in the crosshairs of an increasingly emboldened Sunni opposition, Nisman wrote, referring to the growing anti-Hezbollah movement in Lebanon, especially within the past year. In another piece, also in the Times of Israel, published just today, Mitch Ginsburg spelled out a probable scenario for a post-Alawite-led Syria. He predicted it would lead to a rise in power for the Sunni Muslims in Lebanon and that it could push the country toward another civil war. These are all fascinating events to watch, particularly in light of some comments my father made on April 25th on the Key of David program. He said Syria is at this time closely allied with Iran, but they're about to have a break with Iran and it's going to have some domino effects on other nations. Referring to a prophecy in Psalm 83, he then said, Gibal, or modern day Lebanon, is today a home of the Iranian terrorists, but that's about to change. We're talking about dramatic changes here. Later on in the same program, he said Lebanon's alliance with Iran is about to be broken. So God tells us that Lebanon will eventually be joining that Arab camp that opposes Iran. That's not what we see on the map today, but it is coming. This same prophecy, as we've told you repeatedly, also tells us that Syria too will eventually be in the camp that opposes Iran. The ties that bind Lebanon and Syria with Iran are splitting as the Middle East turmoil continues to churn. Lebanon will eventually break from Iran's hold. Then it will probably join with Syria and Gaza together, all under the leadership of Germany. You watch for it, and when it happens, remember where you heard it first. For much more on these earth-shaking alliance shifts, search for an article a mysterious prophecy at thetrumpet.com. This is Stephen Flurry reporting from Jerusalem.